We are revisiting the GTX 780 Ti's gaming performance in the modern era, landing it on charts with this year's major releases from both AMD and Nvidia. A couple of the benchmarks also contain Maxwell and 300 series cards for further scaling analysis. And just recently we did this same test with the GTX 770 to show upgrade pathways for three to four year old hardware and we'll be looking next at AMD cards from the 200 series so stay subscribed for that. Before getting to that this coverage is brought to you by Catalyst Energy Mints for lawn PC building sessions. The mints contain caffeine, taurine, B vitamins and Siberian Eleuthero with no sugar. Learn more about the energy drink alternative in the link below. Use code GAMERSNEXUS for a 5% discount. We're not going to completely re-review this card. It is a bit old at this point. We'll be looking at power and thermals. But we'll be looking at gaming performance. And the 780 Ti runs on NVIDIA's Kepler architecture. This precedes Maxwell and obviously Pascal, the most recent architecture. And that means a couple of important points that we have to sort of remind everyone of. One, this uses GPU Boost 2.0, functions a bit differently than 3.0. This is a reference card as well that we've got on the table, and that's the one we benchmarked. It operates at a boost clock of 928 MHz. Again, Boost 2.0, a bit different. And in terms of other core specs, the core count is 2880 CUDA cores, but the very important thing to hear, here to note is that Kepler cores are quite a bit different than the later generation cores, and that's generally true between all architectures for recent years anyway. Uh, so versus later cores that the architecture that came out more recently, Kepler was something like 40% less efficient per watt, depending on which architecture you're looking at, Pascal or Maxwell. And that means that on these older cards, you'll see a higher core count than maybe the performance looks like it makes sense, at least versus the modern benchmark. So note that, and then things like data path optimization, clock gating, delta memory compression, color compression, all these technologies that improve the performance per watt, uh, the changes there really do make a huge difference for the modern architectures on both AMD and Nvidia. Other specs for the 780 Ti include a 7 gigabit per second memory clock, a bit slower than modern devices, and it's also running 3 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory on a 384 bit memory interface. The TDP of the reference card is 250 watts, a fair bit higher than today's significantly more powerful GTX 1080 and its 180 watt TDP. A lot of gaming power savings are in lower voltage process too, so moving to FinFET from planar gets you down to about 0.8 volts at the low end rather than 1 volt. GDDR5X on the GTX 1080 and Titan XP also reduce the voltage requirement and compressing colors and memory reduces the power consumed per bit transacted. The 780 Ti had a launch price of about $700, putting it sort of close to the GTX 1080 for today. And that means if you owned one when it came out in November of 2013, you were pretty much the king of the graphics market. So for today, we're revisiting the gaming performance. I'm sure a lot of folks still have these and might be looking to upgrade in the next year or two, if not immediately. Uh, we're not looking at production workloads, so the way the older architecture was built does mean that the performance scaling in some production workloads may actually be better than what we're looking at for gaming scaling. Uh, but that's out of scope for today. So we're looking at FPS only, and we'll start off with Battlefield 1, a couple of the newer games. If you have curiosities about some of the older titles, including Shadow of Mordor, we also re tested the recent Mirror's Edge Catalyst. You can hit the link in the description below for the article and the full benchmark with a couple of extra charts and the full testing methodology, including all the drivers used for the devices and other notes that may be important. We only tested Battlefield 1 using DirectX 11 since DX12 has generally shown poor performance in frame times in our previous tests. We'll look at Doom for Vulcan though, so stick around for that. The reference 780 Ti performs at about 58 FPS average at 1080p Ultra in Battlefield 1. That's with the lows reasonably close at 47.7 FPS and 45.3 FPS. Although Nvidia has improved its frame time consistency generationally, Everything since Kepler has still been pretty tightly timed, and we're seeing that reflected in the 780 Ti. Comparatively, this performance puts us adjacent to the GTX 960 SSC from Maxwell, and that's, of course, a pre-overclocked card, a reasonably heavily pre-overclocked card, and about tied with this generation's GTX 1050 Ti. We're above the RX 460 by about 15 FPS, and that's a meaningful gap, and below the RX 470 by about 15 FPS, right in between the two. Strictly looking at same brand generational jaunts, the $140 to $160 1050 Ti's offer effectively equivalent gaming performance in Battlefield 1 to the once kin 780 Ti. Being that the 780 Ti was a $700 card, a modern price equivalent 
shy anyway of the 1080 Ti, which doesn't exist yet, would be the GTX 1080. And that lands us at such high frame rate that we really should look at the next chart for a better idea. At 1440p Ultra with Battlefield 1, we see the GTX 1080 landing at around 116 FPS average compared to the 780 Ti Kepler card at 38.7 average. High resolution gameplay has changed significantly in the last two generations, even for mid-range $200 cards, if you see the 1016 480. And the RX 480, for instance, blows the 780 Ti away in 1440p performance, and the GTX 1060 is right there with it, nearly doubling the 780 Ti in 1440p with ultra settings. Moving on to Doom, we'll look at both OpenGL and Vulkan performance on the GTX 780 Ti. At 1080p ultra with OpenGL, we're seeing a performance output of approximately 64 FPS average on the 780 Ti. Still plenty playable for 1080p gaming, but comparatively not so impressive. 780 Ti sits between the 1050 and 1050 Ti and is well below the RX 470, 480, and GTX 1060. With Vulkan, our averages negatively scale on the 780 Ti. FPS goes from about 64 average to 53 average, and although they're not shown in this OpenGL and Vulkan comparison, the lows for the 780 Ti fall to about 33 and 25.6 FPS, not particularly impressive. 1440p Ultra is more of the same. The 780 Ti operates an average frame rate of 45 FPS at 1440p with OpenGL, with lows around 31 FPS and 25 at 7 FPS. This plants us just under the RX 470's average and about 20 FPS below the GTX 1060 and RX 480. The GTX 970 SSC also does well here with a 70 FPS average. Jumping to the modern price equivalent of the 780 Ti, performance goes up to around 125 to 130 FPS average, or about 3x the 780 Ti's performance when we look at the GTX 1080. Vulkan mostly posts similar scaling to the last chart, with an average FPS of about 40 and lows at 27 and 25. Really, you're better off with OpenGL in this particular title with this card. Call of Duty Black Ops 3 is next, operating at 1080p and 1440p with high settings. At 1080p, we're seeing an average frame rate of about 90 FPS with lows at 59.1% and 49.1%. This lands the 780 Ti about 10 FPS ahead of the 1050 Ti and below the 970 SSC and even the 380X. If that sounds odd, keep in mind that Black Ops 3 has favored AMD for its entire lifespan. We've shown that consistently over the last year. So this is not abnormal behavior for this particular title when looking at AMD and Nvidia. 1440p has the same stack up for the 780 Ti. The GTX 1080 operates at around 143 FPS average, 980 Ti is at 103, and the 780 Ti is at 56. That's nearly a 3x difference between Kepler and Pascal, or about 2x between Kepler and Maxwell. We're throwing it back now to Metro Last Light for a game that's been around for ages, was optimized eons ago, and hasn't seen many changes in drivers or game performance since that time. At 1080p with very high quality and high tessellation, Metro Last Light gives us a good look at 780Ti scaling over the years on older titles, which it was built for. It's operating at 79 FPS average, just between the RX 484GB and 1063GB. The 980Ti, for reference, operates at around 109 average, with the GTX 1080 at around 135 average. 1440p with Metro is mostly the same hierarchy, unsurprisingly. 780Ti sits now at 56 FPS average and still pretty reasonable, but feels a bit limp compared to the equally matched the GTX 1060 3GB card, same memory capacity, and the RX 480 Gaming X 8GB card does quite well comparatively, operating at around 57 FPS average. GTA 5 is a 2015 title that's remained relevant through this year and offers us a mid-step between the brand new games and the old guard like Metro. The 780Ti pushes 74 FPS average with lows in the 50s when playing GTA 5 at 1080p with very high and ultra quality settings, effectively maxed out other than the advanced graphics tab. This lands the card ahead of the 380X and the 1050Ti, which is a bit different from our very first results just because of how GTA 5 is optimized. The 780Ti ends up a bit below the 1060 again and the RX 470 again. It is consistent in this regard and effectively always tied or behind the GTX 1060. This is particularly true with 1440p. We haven't retested every device yet at 1440p with GTA 5, but our limited list of results shows the 1060, 470, and 480 performing against the 780Ti, and the 1060 and 480 outperform the 780Ti in these results. 
It's been almost exactly three years since the GTX 780 Ti came out, and the card hasn't aged so well. If we look at other GPUs, this seems pretty expected, really. The 770 was further proof of this. They really just, as technology advances and as even the console generations mature and the developers mature their process for developing games on those current-gen consoles, because that does sort of dictate a lot of the gaming today and the development of games today, these cards have not done too well to scale their performance. Now, the 780 Ti is still a damn good card. It does 1080p just fine. It's still hitting high frame rates in all of these tests for 1080p. It's only when you start pushing higher resolutions that the card struggles, and that's sort of where the new trend is. The trend for this year has been supporting things like 1440p with $200 video cards, and that's new. $250 gets you a card that can pretty reasonably perform about 60 FPS, depending on the game, with the GTX 1060, RX 480, something like that, and run 1440p with ultra or high graphics. The 780 Ti just can't do it. You could lower your graphics settings, of course, and still play the higher resolutions, but for enthusiasts who still want that bleeding edge, higher resolution, higher quality technology, obviously it's about time to upgrade now. Uh, there's still a bit more life left in the 780 Ti. You could easily get another year and still be playing at pretty high settings, high, very high ultra, as the sort of three categories you would be in while at 1080p. But if looking to upgrade resolutions, then the card is next. In terms of upgrades, it doesn't make a ton of sense to move to something like an RX 480 or GTX 1060. They do outperform the 780 Ti, but they feel sort of like lateral upgrades. And although I haven't tested it, you might lose some performance in production workloads where the additional cores, although less efficient, would be favored. The 1070 would be a more worthwhile gain, and of course the new year should yield Vega products, which will undoubtedly be targeting the high-end market and likely cause some price wars. But between what's out now, 1070, 1080 are the obvious only choices. Really, I would not necessarily recommend an RX 480 or GTX 1060 as your upgrade. Things to look out for would be how do the prices change for the 1080s. They've settled down a bit, so if you remember launch, they were all pretty much over the low-end MSRP. That's kind of calmed down. It's easier to justify a purchase now. 1080 Ti will come out at some point, so if you really need that Ti branding to feel relevant, then I guess wait around for it. But uh, otherwise, you've got the, the only two cards to look at other than waiting for things like Vega and the 1080 Ti. So that is all for this time. As always, Patreon link in the post roll video to help us out directly. Subscribe for more content. Link in the description below for the full article with all of the charts and extras. I'll see you all next time.